Don't forget this persecution is being done by the same weaponized agencies that for seven years have been running illegal psychological warfare campaigns against the American people, much as if they were trying to destabilize a foreign country. Wow. Uh, this got very little attention, but I do believe this is happening. Psychological warfare, we know it, we've called it. It's famous when it's used against America. Who remembers or heard of Tokyo Rose? That woman, an American, oh, by the way, who took to the microphone to say awful things to American troops and uh, to get their hopes down. Oh, Yankee, go home. You're not going to win this war. What's your wife up to? Stuff like that can also be more benign, like handing out literature to Iraqis about, well, how great the occupation is going to be or dropping leaflets from an airplane over Afghanistan with similar messages. Um, sometimes we overpromised in those messages. Look, psychological operations is something the military is, uh, well, have all kinds of formalized programs. They've been teaching this stuff for years. And yes, it involves deception. PSYOP soldiers strategically influence and deceive. This is a U.S. military website. Psychological operations soldiers help sway opinions and actions of foreign governments, foreign groups and individuals. Also, psychological warfare requires adaptability, resilience, and problem solving to be successful. It's great when it's used against foreign governments. Is it being used here? Uh, take a look at this. Trained in persuasive techniques, PSYOP soldiers use their skills to change attitudes, behaviors, values, beliefs. Well, I'm not saying the U.S. Army did it, but uh, the government did it. The government was involved in censoring and playing a psychological warfare game on all of us regarding Hunter Biden's laptop. Some of them actually even signed their name to that dopey letter, which was a deceptive tactic. Absolutely straight out of the psychological operations handbook. That laptop, you couldn't even talk about it on social media. The oldest newspaper in the country, the New York Post, was kicked off of Twitter. They couldn't post anything after October 14th before Election Day. Now, one of the big giveaways that there was a psychological warfare campaign, in effect, was General Milley. Back to the Army for a moment. Remember this? When he walked across the street with President Trump and he decided to make a super duper big deal about it. Been there. My presence in that moment and in that environment created a perception of the military involved in domestic politics. He should not have been there, he says, with the president of the United States. This is part of a psychological warfare campaign. Just as he apologizes for the appearance of being involved in domestic politics, he then weighs in on every single domestic political hot button issue of our time. I am outraged by the senseless and brutal killing of George Floyd. What we are seeing is the long shadow of our original sin in Jamestown 401 years ago. We are still struggling with racism and we have much work to do. Unspoken and unconscious bias have no place in America and they have no place in our armed forces. And we should all be proud that the vast majority of protests have been peaceful. We must ensure fairness and equity at all key gateway selection boards, including promotion, command, and work Be inclusive. Make a commitment to seek out and surround yourself with those who don't look like you. How woke can you get? Hmm? How woke can you get, General? Um